Hello there, and welcome to Lesson 2 of LVP Horror 101. I'm your host, The Unknown One, and today we'll be discussing horror elements and horror techniques. In the first lesson, I went over two of the bases I follow when creating horror. Now I'll go over the other two bases in a somewhat lengthy detail. Let's start with horror elements. Horror elements consist of several different components. The mystery, the victim, the monster, the theme, the world, the atmosphere, and the struggle. Again, this is very similar to the way literary elements are understood in English class. It's used many of the same ideas, but modified for the sole use of horror. Let me explain each one separately. The element of mystery. Mystery is what you do not know about the horror story, but slowly find out as you progress through the level. It's the unknown, the big secret, the puzzling truth you must find out or die trying. Mystery invokes curiosity, a motive in which we develop after our first taste of the story. Some horror stories are finished with the mystery still unsolved. We are left to only wonder and decide for ourselves what had really happened and why. The element of victim. Victim or victims are always the characters that are at risk of a horrible fate. In a horror level, your character, or a character that you are controlling, will serve as a main character, unless it happens to be a horror film. Unlike horror books and movies, you feel a much greater sense of immersion when controlling the main character. You're not sitting on their shoulder itching as they plunge themselves into darkness. You become a part of the story, playing the major role and conjuring an extraordinary experience as the victim. The element of monster. Monster, or monsters, is a cause of fear and tragedy in a horror level. Now, this isn't always meant to be a big scary creature trying to eat you. It could be a plague, mother nature, death itself, or maybe you are the monster all along. Either way, the monster is typically the rooted evil in a level, which brings me to the next horror element, the theme. The element of theme. The theme, in general, is the whole point of the story that can be summed up in one word. Hate, loneliness, revenge, karma, torture, insanity, grief, sorrow, envy, regret, murder. The best part is the fact that your story can be built around multiple themes at once. The element of world. World is pretty much the setting of the story, the time and place it all went down. Now the world is a big place as we know it, and when we open up our minds and play make-believe, there's an infinite number of worlds to play with, an alternate reality, an imaginary world, a dream, a nightmare, or the apocalypse. The element of atmosphere. Atmosphere would be the tone and mood of the level, the emotional feelings that bring the world to life. Setting, lighting, objects, music, material, noises, even dialogue can invoke feeling and will make up the atmosphere of the level. Smashing two different atmospheres together or ripping from one into another can create very interesting effects as well. An excellent example of this would be the two different worlds of Silent Hill. And the element of struggle. The struggle is real. Sorry, I had to, but no, really. The struggle is conflict within the level. The tension and strain you must undergo to reach the final conclusion. A good horror level will give the player a constant sense of impending doom. But this is not always easy to pull off, so think of what you'll be struggling for when you create the level. Is it for your life, your freedom, or could it be your sanity? All of these elements play a crucial role in a horror level and need to have a sense of balance. You don't want to have the world and atmosphere feeling way more engaging than the struggle and mystery was. It doesn't matter which horror element you start with, so long as you make sure they all can relate and feel relevant. Now let's move on to horror techniques. If horror elements make up the main event, then horror techniques would be your bag of tricks. These methods actually pertain to a few elements, so I'll list and describe each in the related groups, starting with horror techniques of mystery. The horror techniques of mystery are backstory, omen, plot twist, and cliffhanger. Most of the time the backstory is seen at the start of the level, incorporated into the intro, but it can also be revealed in the middle or even the last waking minutes before the end. A word of advice would be to try and simplify the backstory as much as possible. Unless it's a horror film, anything over five minutes of backstory is going to be a waste of thermometer room. Omens are usually signs that something really bad is about to happen. A bloody nightmare, violent weather, pigeons flying into the window. Typically when your dreams, the weather, or animals start acting a little strange, you get a sense that something wicked this way comes.
A plot twist can be the most powerful and memorable part of a horror story, but at the same time, it can completely ruin your whole level. You need to be careful with this technique as to make it so that it isn't obvious and doesn't fall short of the potential shock value. Don't just stick something random in there at the end like, oh, it was just a dream. My mind should be blown all over the walls and ceilings after the ending of your level. A cliffhanger is similar to the plot twist in which they are both dramatic endings, but a cliffhanger sets you up for a part two. If an arm comes shooting out of the grave where the body of the killer was put to rest, you know there's going to be a part two. Generally, a cliffhanger is when the story ends with the problem still unsolved. All of my Sackboy.exe levels end in this particular manner. Horror Techniques of Monster the horror techniques of monster are deformity, involuntary, and vulnerability. Deformity is scary, it is unnatural, and I swear to god it can be really fucking creepy at times. Why? Well it's obvious something's wrong when the creepy little girl has missing eyes, a twisted face, and a mouth that opens five times wider than normal. A healthy human being is born with two arms, legs, a body, and head, right? We are all different, but it looks similar as a species. Normal. Deformity is viewed as abnormal. Naturally, it tells us that something is very wrong here when a person has a freakishly long neck or a face in their hands. Something involuntary would be something we don't have conscious control over, such as breathing air or growing up. How does this relate to horror monsters? Think of blinking in SCP containment breach or dreaming in Nightmare of Elm Street. As a victim, you should be 100% vulnerable to the monster at all times. This doesn't mean the monster should know exactly where you are or endlessly chase you. It's when the monster is looking for you while you pray to God that it doesn't open the closet door that unsettles you. That or the feeling of the monster stalking you from beyond the darkness, capable of striking at any moment. This creates a sense of dread in the player, sometimes even despair. Horror Techniques of Atmosphere The horror techniques of atmosphere are abandonment, claustrophobia, haunting, suspense, and jump scares. Abandonment can be an atmospheric quality given in countless settings in horror. Dirty, dusty, rusty, messy walls and ceilings falling apart. It's the perfect place for a level, but abandoned places have become increasingly overused nowadays, so you'd better think up a really good reason as to why exactly I would be dumb enough to just waltz right in. Claustrophobia is the fear of no escape from a small place, but you don't have to be stuck in an elevator to feel like this in a horror level. A constant thick fog or a flashlight in total darkness can ooze a claustrophobic feel in the wide openness of nothing. It's being attacked while crawling through a tunnel or air vent that can prove to be really jarring. Haunting is pretty straightforward. A ghost or demon is haunting a certain place or even person. This usually happens when sins such as murder have been committed in said haunted establishment. You start hearing noises, seeing things, and witnessing paranormal acts occur, such as the clock moving backwards or objects flying across the room. There are an endless number of creative ways to depict a supernatural haunting. Suspense is a feeling where you know something's going to happen. Whether you brace yourself or you're as shaky as a leaf, you're flushed with fear and anticipation. This can be created when the tense music suddenly stops and you're left with a dead silence right before the jump scare. I'm sure plenty of you already know what a jump scare is. Jump scares have a powerful effect on a level when specific conditions are met, such as timing, tension, and reason for the jump scare. I'd have to say that a flash horror game with a disturbing face randomly popping up always tends to freak me out, but I really hope none of you solely rely on this technique to scare the player, because after the first one, I'll probably be rolling my eyes at the second, third, or 700th jump scare. Just make sure you spend more time on the actual story rather than the jump scare itself. Otherwise, it'll just be a jump scare level instead of an actual horror level. There's plenty more techniques to list, but I find these to be the most effective and useful when creating horror levels. None of these terms are set in stone anywhere. It's all a compilation of simplified research I did for the purpose of advice from a horror creator. You do not have to use each and every horror technique for your horror level. I apologize if all this can be overwhelming to some of you, so in my next lesson we'll be spending some time in create mode. If you have any questions related to horror elements and techniques, feel free to comment below. Until then, this has been LBP Horror 101 with the unknown one saying, class is dismissed.